Yeah. The city of Lakewood uh, adopted a charter. Well, I was on the council from 69 to 75. And we were, of course, at that time still what's known as a statutory city. We operated under state law because we had not yet uh, created a charter. The city uh, wrote a charter and passed it after I left the council, I think about 77 or 78 maybe. Pardon? The charter's 82. 82 before you got the charter done. And that's when some of the positions became um, um, appointed rather than elected. And also they made the council people, they staggered the terms. They gave them four-year terms and staggered them. And before that, we'd had two-year terms. And Wheat Ridge is still an elected position. There uh, was an attempt to change that in the last election, but it, it didn't pass. So the uh, clerk and the treasurer are elected. Yes? Do you remember what the approximate population of the two municipalities were when you incorporated them approximately versus today? Lakewood was about 95,000, we believe. There were figures bandied around, but see, this was at the end of uh, <coughs> the, uh, the census had been done in 60, of course, and then in 69 it had changed, but we guessed at about 95, between 95 and 100,000. At that time, it was the largest incorporation to ever take place in, the, in this country. Now, I think that maybe Centennial uh, past that when they incorporated a couple of years ago. What's the population now? About 144, 45,000. 140 something. Wheat Ridge was, um, we thought we had 35,000 people when we incorporated, but somehow or another uh, we lost five or 6,000 someplace. <laughs> <laughs> Wheat Ridge is basically the same size today. I think it's around 30 or, or 31,000. There was a problem at one time that. Uh, uh, because of zip codes, uh, Denver was getting credit for a part of Wheat Ridge, and somebody else was getting credit for a part of Wheat Ridge, so we never knew for a long, long time, and I'm not sure it's right today. So we're probably at around 30,000 people. Yes. What were the benefits to the citizens to incorporate as their own city rather than, than becoming part of Denver? Why, why did they choose to go that route? Well, let me give you my opinion on that. I had moved to Colorado in 1959, came here from the east, and had, been, had lived in a rural area. And <coughs> so I very much wanted to be part of a city. And when we started looking for houses, uh, we found that property in the parts of Denver that we were interested in were just too expensive, and we could buy more cheaply by coming to Jefferson County. We were told by the realtors <coughs> at that time, well, you don't have to worry because this area is going to be annexed to Denver within the next few years. As soon as Denver resolves what they would refer to as their blue line, which was an area beyond which they wouldn't serve water. So um, I moved here thinking that I wanted to go to Denver. Jefferson County Schools, though, at that time were starting to grow. They had merged, all of the little school districts had merged into Jefferson County, uh, R1 district, in the early 50s, about 53. And so they were now becoming very well known as an up and coming school district doing some very interesting and good things. Denver, on the other hand, was starting into their um, desegregation battles. The courts were involved and they were having to bus students, you know, and that was a terribly big issue. Plus the fact that by constitution, anybody, if you annex to the city of Denver, you automatically become part of the school district and part of the judicial district. 
So the feelings had developed against annexation. I think an awful lot of it was due to the school situation. I, I can tell you about Wheat Ridge. Wheat Ridge, uh, uh, about 30 years ago, there was a great rivalry between Lakewood and Wheat Ridge, and Wheat Ridge and Arvada, everybody had their own area stamped out. 26th Avenue was the dividing line between Wheat Ridge and Lakewood. Basically, they didn't want to have anything to do with Lakewood. Secondly, they were afraid that uh, in the incorporation of Lakewood, if Wheat Ridge went in, they would be swallowed up in a, in a big city, be setting out on the edge, and, and they wouldn't have their just due with the city. So that was the, two of the reasons that that happened. Wheat Ridge also uh, were really uh, almost a closed community. Well, if you were from Wheat Ridge, you were from Wheat Ridge. <laughs> and that's the way it was. It was that independence in, in their thinking. And I'm sure that went on in Lakewood, too. But it was one of the reasons why they decided to split. And then the other thing was that uh, you living today and, and working in the atmosphere that you work in today, a town like Wheat Ridge or uh, an area like Wheat Ridge had the Grange. I don't know whether you even know what a Grange is. And the fire department. Those were the two bodies that ruled the area. Everything went through the Grange or went through the fire department. And so uh, these people were very instrumental in, in uh, incorporating Wheat Ridge. And if it wasn't for them working the way that they did, I don't know how we would have come out. There's one story when they were drawing the lines for the city. Uh, as Hank said, they did this on Jim Ritchie's ping pong table. I think it's ping pong, not pool, but <laughs> in his basement. And Jim had been brought into this because previous attempts to incorporate had very much involved the Chamber of Commerce. And they couldn't get the citizens all that interested. So they came to Richie and a couple of other citizens and asked them to head up an incorporation effort. And I think that it made a lot of difference. But they drew these lines and they very carefully drew them around some areas or excluded some areas, primarily because we knew that those areas were gonna vote against incorporation. So just leave them out. <laughs> and if you, <laughs> If you look at the early maps of Lakewood, uh, it, they're pretty kind of zigzag, unusual lines, and, and they still are, because a couple of those areas are still outside of Lakewood. But one, what, at one time, Ed Anderson, who was working on the Wheat Ridge part of it, called Jim Ritchie and said, could you adjust that line over there just one block? My mother's house is there. And literally, that, that happened, and they redrew the lines uh, to make it, uh, but we got it passed. Remember that? Given the size of Wheat Ridge and obviously the costs that are involved with the infrastructure of a municipality, how do you efficiently run with just 30 to 35,000 population base, whereas I think my perspective is Lakewood has kind of annexed and they've gone and added more population to be able to pay for their services. So is that difficult? And maybe oh, I don't think... I don't think that's difficult at all because Wheat Ridge is kind of an enclosed city. If you took a city of 30,000 people and put them out in the country, you were all right. Wheat Ridge is all right. We have the tax base now. We have the uh, most of the goods and services that we need, although uh, you're always working to try to balance the city into the, the needs of the goods and the services. And so I, I don't think there's a problem there. It's, it's a matter of, to me, it's a matter of continually improving your city, continually changing. And I, I simply think that uh, what we're going to see in 20 years or 30 years or 50 years are going to be great changes in these cities because we have to progress with these changes or we can't make it. But as far as uh, a city of, of 30,000, 
it's a pretty nice city. We we have we have traffic and we have everything else. You know the thing that uh, I th I think that all of us should be aware of that in 30 years ago you were an entity in itself. We didn't want to. We we didn't have the problems Denver had. But today we have all the problems that Denver has. We have all the problems that a metro area has, and we have to contend with them, and we have to try to take care of, of those problems. And I can tell you it costs a lot more money to operate a city to do that. So uh, to me, there's no such thing as suburbia USA anymore. It isn't there. It's a part of a vast metropolitan area that everyone has the same problems and they have to be solved together. Many of the services provided to the cities were done by special districts. And there still are an incre a very large number of special districts who pr that provide water and sewer and drainage and when Lakewood Incorporated, of course, there was the Lakewood Fire Department and the Bancroft Fire Department touched part of it. There was a very large uh, metropolitan recreation district, Foothills, created just very near the same time the city was created. So the city immediately didn't have to take on, you know, providing water and sewer and fire and some of those things. Um, and so, th and the special districts get it, did it by the other, on the other side of that though, this having all those special districts created a lot of problems uh, for the cities. You never quite knew where to lay responsibility for something. And at one time, Jim uh, Ritchie called a meeting of the boards of directors and their attorneys um, of all the special districts in, Jeff in Lakewood, that touched in Lakewood, had it over at uh, what at that time was Lakewood Junior High School at 10th and Wadsworth, and they filled an auditorium. And some of the, they didn't know each other, uh, they didn't, <laughs> They didn't have telephone numbers. If your sewer collapsed, chances were you didn't, you might call the city. City couldn't do anything about it. Some of those problems still exist, although in some cases there have been efforts to uh, consolidate or get them to work together. And in the fire district, particularly, Lakewood and Bancroft did uh, merge and create the Metro Fire District which is, I think, a very, very efficient and a very good fire district that, that people are aware of and know how to get assistance. But all of these things create problems and sometimes cost the citizens more money. Yeah. Well, we didn't know that wasn't not to get away from special districts, but to keep from going into Denver. There are very few of them created now, and it, uh, to create one within a city is virtually impossible. The only ones that I'm aware of that are being created are in unincorporated areas of the county where they may be created to provide a service to a new development. One of those is a situation in um, down at Castle Rock right now, if you've been reading about that development, they wanna create a water district and build a whole bunch of houses and some golf courses. Um, and the citizens now are much more aware and it is much more difficult to to create one of those districts. Because once you get them, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. What do you think of this? Wheat Ridge, I think, had 29 water districts. And, you know, they'd come in and they'd build and, and uh, for two or three blocks while those people who lived there owned the district. Now, the, what the city's done over the years is, is simply tried to help facilitate 
bringing those into the regular water districts that we have and that's been pretty well consolidated uh, one little area down towards Sheridan at 13 different water districts uh, and I, I might add Hank was instrumental in getting these water districts to come together and most of them are the Wheat Ridge Water District <laughs> We have time. It, it, we, we have five more minutes, and we were supposed to talk about the reality of today. But you have been asking questions that are very good for the reality of today. So we just have um, a few more minutes, and then we can um, adjourn. I will. Um, we have lots of time to talk, but your questions on special districts and uh, tri neighborhood associations. Uh, and very things are very, very good questions, and they are challenges uh, facing the, to me, the citizens, because the citizens think the city provides everything, and often we don't. And when they're hollering that the tax, we pay too many taxes, often the taxes they're talking about aren't ones that will support the city, or whoever it is they're complaining about. So let's let's try another question. Well, I don't. <laughs> All right, back there's one. Maybe you could talk a little bit about what you each think are the key areas of development um, going forward for both Wheat Ridge and Lakewood, sectorially or in, in a, uh, a service perspective, you know, be it light rail or whatever. Yeah. I know we're always thinking about how we're going to face, you know, facelift West Colfax and, and start to create a, you know, a more vibrant. I have, uh, over the last, well, I was a county commissioner. That was my last job. I couldn't keep a job, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> uh, I've become terribly concerned, basically, in the last couple or three years. If you're following it, what's going on, of course, in the legislature with the budgets, the city of Denver's budget, they've got, they're trying to cut 20 million out. And of course, everybody always knows where you can cut, but don't cut what affects me. You know, cut, cut your sidewalk out. Don't do that this year. Uh, I think that local governments particularly are going to face some very, very difficult problems. There is no question in my mind that the citizens of this state and, and of Jefferson County are very anti-tax, very. It is almost impossible to get anything passed unless it is extremely <coughs> specific and tied to one thing. Some of the school districts have been successful in getting bonds, others have not. Uh, so I think that we absolutely have to do something about transit. I hear more complaints about, and I complain more, about traffic, congestion, dangerous highways, not enough patrol out there to keep the speeders and the aggressive drivers down. I absolutely am convinced that we have got to do more about transit. And that's going to take money, and it is going to take a vote of the people. As you know, we have to vote on every tax now. You can't do anything uh, like we could do when we created the city. I mean, the city council said, we're going to have a sales tax, and we're going to have a property tax. You can't do that today. It has to be voted upon. Uh, Jefferson County, as far as development land, land that's available for uh, commercial or industrial or what I call tax-based building land uh, is almost gone. Very little of it, maybe a couple of thousand acres. And that's not very much. And we absolutely have to try to look at expanding our tax base because the existing businesses due to our property tax laws, Gallagher, existing businesses are paying what I view as a, as a disproportionate share of the taxes, and they don't want to come here. And if businesses don't come and create jobs and develop, 
uh, then the citizens, the residential, are going to end up paying more and more and more to keep basic services. And that means we won't have anything else, any extras. So I know I sound cynical, and I am to some extent. Maybe it's my age, but it's hard to get anything done today. And it is very easy just to sort of give up and say, well, you know, I'm okay, my house is all right, blah, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. We have to worry. We have got to create jobs in this metropolitan area for the young people coming along. So th you thank you, Ed. Hank? Uh, Hank, did you want to? Just in closing, I don't think that there's any room uh, in planning for the future for secular thinking amongst the cities. I think it has to be a metropolitan thinking. I think everything has to fit together. Secular thinking is fixing chuck holes. But if you're going to talk about what we need in this area, these, this secular thinking has to fall away. Planning has to be put together for everybody. If uh, Betty was mentioning transportation, we have to have transportation for the future. And it can only be done with metropolitan thinking. And so everything that you do, again, has to come together in, in thinking in terms of a metropolitan area and how we as individual cities fit into it and what we can do to help it for the future. Thank you. Um, I our next session will start at 10 and I, I, I was going to do realities. I had it in my laptop. I left my talk at home. But spirit watches over me. And this is to end at 9.45. Am I correct? Can we start our next session at 10? Okay. I have I don't follow much in Centennial, but the differences were that they couldn't incorporate elect a council and set their tax structure. They had to incorporate and you may remember there were all kinds of legal issues and they ultimately went to the Supreme Court to get the right to incorporate. Uh, and they were taking, carving out an area of Arapahoe County. And so they did incorporate, but then uh, they, had, they had no money at all, and they had to set a budget and go to another vote of the people to create their taxes. They created or set up their taxes as low as they could possibly do it because they were basing most of their services or a lot of their services on contracting with the county. They contracted with the Arapahoe County Sheriff, for instance, for law enforcement and did not go with their own police department. Um, they did, when they went back to a vote of the people, the people did support their taxes, which I think was wonderful. They supported them enthusiastically. I guess I was somewhat surprised. The only thing I have heard recently is that their revenues, like everybody else's revenues, are down. They have not brought in as much money as they expected to bring in. And how that is impacting, I heard just or saw in the paper, I guess, that one of their contracts, they were having trouble paying for it because <coughs> they just weren't getting the revenue. And they can't just say, well, you know, we don't have enough revenue, so we've got to increase our sales tax to two cents or whatever. Um, you can't do that today. So it is much more difficult for a city and the elected officials to react to the problems that they face every day. 
it was tough when we were there, you know, and we had a lot of flexibility in setting of the taxes and so forth. But they don't have that flexibility, and I, I wish them the very best. I suspect that ultimately the people are going to want to have their own services, particularly the police department. I think a city that size, and it's over 100,000, a city that size is not for long going to be able to operate under a contract with the county. That would be my opinion anyway, but it's going to be tough, and it will take some time to get going. We, we Labor is another whole issue that is having very difficult impacts. Can I just ask yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, well, there are a lot of people talking about this. This is very true. Have you had your business session yet? So Tom, Tom Clark talked to it about. But um, part of the problem isn't just the county, it's the state. It's, it's the Gallagher Amendment and Tabor, and Tabor restricted everything. Um, you also have um, the property tax is, is supposedly more than, say, in other, other counties. But much of your property tax goes to pay the school system. It pays the county. It pays human services. Am I right? Part of the county is separate. And then it pays for your special districts. If you live in Jefferson County, you go home and look at your tax. As it'll show you all the different things that you, that you pay for. So um, I'm not sure that there is a I haven't heard of a solution, except now people are saying, can we repeal Tabor? Since Tabor passed, you had the single issue passed, and so Tabor was 15 issues, I think. And so you'd have to have 15 initiatives on the ballot to uh, change Tabor. Well, the, in the mayors, or and I'm sure this is true with legislators or commissioners, we'll all have this conversation. But you are exactly correct. It needs to be grassroots, and that's you. And 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 Betty Miller's correct. But Gretchen, as you pointed out earlier, nearly all of our tax problems are constitutional related, and a grassroots effort in Lakewood or Wheat Ridge or together is going to still be very, very difficult to get a ballot issue on. The legislature, I will tell you, and I have talked to many of them, and I've been in discussions with them, they are not about to propose constitutional amendments dealing with Tabor. Everyone, well, they may do one little thing now to allow the state to have a rainy day fund. Maybe you've read about that. Uh, and that's coming from the state treasurer because the fact Tabor really does not allow the state to save money uh, for, you know, <coughs> bad times. And there may be a move to change that. The biggest deterrent to businesses in Jefferson County is the property tax and the Gallagher issue, which puts all of the or lawful burden of property tax on business and less on residential. And I don't know how you would ever repeal that because the citizens would have to vote to increase their property tax and cut business property tax, and they ain't going to do it. <laughs> I, I can tell you uh, from personal experience that uh, having been in business for uh, 
am in business for 48 years. And when you talk about taxes, uh, I've, for several years I've made it uh, a habit of going to the county and protest the taxes just to let them know I'm there. <laughs> Doesn't do a lot of good. But they told me that because of the Gallagher Amendment, you can only raise uh, taxes on a home, uh, just a small percent, I think it is. That, but all the other tax burden has to come from the commercial side of business. And then when you're talking about more employees, you're not going to get more employees unless you get the tax situation straightened out because a uh, small business in particular is, is suffering something fierce. I, I will have to. I've, I have a large small business background. And really the foundation of America as we grew were the, the businesses, whether it was farming, agriculture, or businesses as we came. But now the the businesses and most businesses are very small businesses. I, I call us teeny weeny businesses because we never, uh, my our restaurants even when we had several, we didn't have over 200 employees. Small businesses, what, 200,000 employees or something. Anyway, they all not only have to pay property tax on the land if they own the building that they're in, they have to pay personal property tax on all the machines or the bricks that they have uh, every year. And so the tax burden on businesses is very, very high. It, it, you think your, proper, your home property tax is high or you pay more sales tax. The businesses really get hit. And if your business is closed down, or you see that in our, in our country. How many manufacturers have moved everything overseas? That's a result of how do you compete. And, and there isn't... I mean, they're, 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 I don't know the answer at all. We, we were hoping to get the answers from you all. <laughs> and, and this is a problem facing uh, Wheatridge today. Is, and we've been, as um, Hank said, we've always been a very cheap, financially conservative community, and we still are. Uh, we are one of the communities who has not, quote, unquote, debruced, which doesn't throw out Tabor. It only says if you take little money, off your revenue limit, you can keep it. Um, but And we went through a, for a sales tax increase in the last uh, November, which was turned down, went down in flames. But now we're confronted with, um, uh, we, we don't, we, we ran, sort of ran out of money. Our, our council said you have to keep a 20% fund balance or a savings account. And we had more than that four or five years ago. And so council has done a lot of things to help improve the city. I mean, we, and one of them, I'll have pictures over there for the 38th Avenue streetscape. We've tried to really make that better. Um, the recreation center was built with an increase in tax base, but it has since gone out, but we have to, to run it. We try to make it pay for itself. And, um, but the, the last uh, budget that came through was We've been eating into our savings account every year, and the last one, we couldn't eat into our savings anymore. Council said back to the city manager, we want a 20% fund balance, so you have to go back and figure out how we can provide these services and do that. And, and staff and council worked very, very hard to be creative, and I think we used that wonderful tactic of denial for a long time. However, in the end, uh, to, to have a budget that even came close, 11 full-time people lost their jobs. And that was in addition to the city no longer paying for crossing guards at the schools, which I think hit the newspapers. And uh, somebody saying now they're going to recall the council and me for doing that. So we, we have to be as much or more creative than Betty and Hank did when these cities were founded. It's a whole new world, and how are how are we going to give people services? People are kind of used to getting services now. I mean, you really need police now. You know, you really want better roads, and and how do you do that? It's the same as what Betty's saying. Well, those people over there, they don't need this, but I need this, and uh, so. Uh, quite frankly, I'm hoping that from you we'll get some some creative ideas, and um, our our next session will show of some ways that uh, Lakewood has 
And um, we've got some real pretty pictures of the streetscape project that City Council did on 38 for the heart of Weedridge. So Carol, where do we meet? Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Sure. Uh, and this is on behalf of Jim Ritchie. Jim always closes our presentation, and I did talk with Jim yesterday. Uh, you and other individuals like you represent the future of these communities. And I sincere, I think this is a great program, not because I've participated in it for 15 years or so, but I really think that the fact that you will take the time and spend the money and the effort to learn more about your government, I would sincerely urge that you stay involved. Don't come through this program and say, well, that was fun and that was interesting and now I'm going to go back to the bank or wherever and earn my living. <coughs> the cities and the county and government generally needs committed individuals. And I think you have that opportunity and I just urge you to have that commitment to help out your community. And thank you very much. We've enjoyed doing this with you. Carol, where do we meet next?